Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Even though I cannot uh, understand, uh, <laughs> beside my name and MSD China, I, I don't know uh, anything. <laughs> but thank you again for the invitation. And uh, this is my first time to Korea, uh, to Oslo, and it's a pretty city. And um, so I'm going to start my presentation and because of this is the um, ICHE 17 training and my topic is about the uh, MRCT implementation in China. Um, uh, I think the, the most recent discussion about the E17 implementation is how can especially the uh, East Asian countries can uh, discuss together and get the harmonize on how to uh, have the uh, general accepted uh, implementation. So it's it's my honor to be here uh, and to uh, to have the discussion and communication with uh, colleagues uh, and uh, the the expertise in Korea and to have this kind of the discussion. Thank you. And this is agenda uh, I'm going to present. Why MRCT? Actually, the professor Lee uh, just talked about the uh, MRCT, especially the E17. Uh, he already introduced most of the uh, pro and cons, uh, especially no benefit most uh, for the MRCT E17. But I still want to give a very brief introduction on that, especially how MRCT uh, will going to benefit in China. And then following that, I'm going to introduce. Uh, it's just like the history of the uh, related guideline about MRCT uh, in China or impl implemented in China. And the most recent one is the acceptance of the foreign clinical data guideline. Um, it's very close to um, like uh, how can we um, the, about the foreign clinical data, is, is there any room to accept it directly? So this guideline answer these questions. And because I'm the statistician, so I'm also discuss uh, how to calculate the sample size calculation and the consistency assessments in MRCT as concept. And then I, I will give a few case studies um, which MSD China participate in the global MRCT. Um, because of the E17, uh, implementation discussion. I joining as one of the uh, representative from the pharmaceutical company. So I here also uh, brings some summarize of the discussion on how the E17 implementation uh, can be really um, done in China. So I would like to start from the MRCT. Okay, the definition of MRCT, um, it's, it's uh, a few keywords. The first one is we have to follow the same protocol. It's the common protocol. It's a clinical trial with a common protocol involved, different centers in multi-region, and then the participate enrolled from different regions or countries. Then the data collected is also anticipated to be analyzed as a whole. So this is very basic concept on definition for the MRCT. And usually, uh, as Professor Lee mentioned, it's employed in the phase three trials. This is the common practice. Um, because of the uh, how the, the, there is assumption that MRCT can be performed is that we assume the regions are equivalent and no significant difference exists. Um, and then once the overall uh, trial results can be assessed, we need to conduct the subgroup analysis. And then we need to assess the consistency of the result from the subgroup compared with the overall population. Of course, we also uh, need to pay attention to the uh, um, intrinsic and extrinsic factors on the treatment effect. 
Now,、uh, there are many benefits that MRCT brings.、Um, obviously, it brings a lot of the、uh, barriers of patient population and the rapid enrollments、uh, from wider population and different healthcare situation,、uh, different healthcare situations, and for、uh, countries. Except EU or US, most of the、uh, main Caucasian、uh, patients provided. Then it's early submissions for registration, like even for the China,、uh, Korean, or、uh, Japan. Then it can be、uh, realized and help resolve the drug lag problems.、Um, Compared with a few years ago, I think、uh, my colleagues in Korea also、uh, helped to review the history.、Uh, a few years ago, like the drug lag for a new drug approved in Korea can reach to five years after U.S.、Uh, approval. It's quite similar situation in China. It's about like to four to five, even six years. And even the Gasol, we we almost late ten years for the global approval. So、uh, if the MRCT can be、uh, well applied, then these drug lab problem can、uh, greatly resolved. And、uh, because of the、uh, various population. The findings can be generalized easily, and、um, uh, from the operation、uh, pro perspective,、uh, the MRCT optimizes the results and reduces the cost. And it also encourages the joining the global clinical trials to improve the clinical trial conduction in several different countries.、Um, it also benefits the public health. So、um, here's a just list、uh, list of A very high-level benefit of the MRCT, and I'm going to talk about why MRCT in China. So here,、uh, there are five different、uh, filing scenarios、uh, in China. Not all MRCT. For example, the first one, the type A, is the post-CPP-based registration.、Um, apparently, this is the most.、Uh, The 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 long the longest the drug lag、uh, approval compared with other situation, so it can reach to six to even more than six years, and the type B and C are both are pre CPP based.、Uh, the type B actually、uh, are more like the MRCT we discussed here. It's the real MRCT. Which means、uh, we well the local PK or local phase one part is the separate story. But there are Chinese patients joining the global phase three study as confirmatory trial、um, in in the same protocol as the protocol、uh, as the global conduct the trial. Um, type C. The difference of the type C is this type of MRCT. The majority of patients are still in China, so this is kind of like the、uh, I don't want to say fake, but it's like the mimic MRCT. So、uh, the Chinese patients can reach about the 80 percent of the total、uh, population of the study.、Um, these Recently, we we have some practical、uh, example of this type of the、um, MRCT trial, but most of、uh, more and more we go to type B, the real MRCT practice. And type B and E, they are more like the uh, uh, import the drug or the local product,、uh, the local development drug,、uh, the the、uh, registration. So I'm not going to. Uh, talk too much of these two. Now,、uh, the next one, I I would like to、uh, review some guideline applied in China on the MRCT and the most recent one, the acceptance of the foreign clinical data. In 1998, ICHE5、uh, brings in the bridging concept. Uh, which means the ethnic factors we 
E7, E5, actually, um, the, the very basic concept is that, well, the global trial has conducted, and then one region are going to do the registration, and we need to conduct the ethnic assessment, sensitivity assessment, in this particular region, which are going to be um, uh, filing for the NDA filing for this new drug. And because of this one, you, we have to uh, set up the, the bridging concept, meaning that, well, uh, the global data and then the, the data from the region, uh, the particular region, bridge together. And we, we need to uh, assess the consistency. So how can we uh, well do this? Actually, the, the China agency has very, uh, like one cut solution. They propose we need PK, local PK study, uh, 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 along with 100 uh, patients in each treatment arm. So usually it's the two treatment arm comparison, like one in treatment, one in control. So we call it the 100 pairs of patients in the phase three study. Apparently, uh, this is not very efficient and uh, takes a lot of time, especially when the review of the CTA, uh, the clinical trial application review time is quite long. Uh, it used to be like two years for, uh, for a, a sponsor or a global pharmaceutical company apply uh, the protocol to the real uh, first patient in, it takes more than two years. So usually a, a com confirmatory phase three study, the enrollment already complete within the two years. So how can we join in the MRCT, right? So this is just very basic concept. Um, and then most of the Chinese companies, they conduct their own, uh, like the local or regional, regional MRCT, which means Okay, you require one a hundred pairs of a pa uh, hundred pairs of patients in the MRCT. Then the eighty percent, it it will consist uh, composed of the eighty percent of the the uh, mimic MRCT population, and we pick up a, a few like one or two more countries from um, Vietnam or from like Australia, and to mimic a. Uh, 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 MRCT, but it's not the real MRCT. So this is a particular like doing the homework for the agency. Of course, it provides data uh, of the efficacy and safety of Chinese patients, but it's uh, most like we, it's the hard requirement for, uh, from the agency. And following that, uh, in 2007, uh, Japan proposed the basic principle of global clinical trial, especially on uh, the sample size calculation and analysis, which called the method one and method two. Um, in the statistical section, I will help to uh, review these two methods. Um, 2012, Japan proposed uh, some reference case for this uh, basic principle. And in, from that time, uh, the agency, both agency and the, uh, the pharmaceutical companies in China kind of accept and try to apply this uh, method. So um, this is the most, uh, uh, also the most recent, um, most common practice of the method one from the Japan, uh, the the basic principle on the global clinical trial in China. And in 2015, CFDA proposed the international multi-center trials, uh, the guideline for this. And I will spend some time to review the uh, high level, key, uh, to, to uh, help to review the key points of these guidelines later on. Um, and the most recent one is the 2018 July, the CFDA proposed the guidelines uh, uh, for the acceptance of the foreign clinical data. 
I will also uh, review some key uh, points from this guideline. And the most uh, recent one is the ICHE 17 implementation. Uh, the clear implementation in China is still under discussion, and we set up the working group uh, with from the academia, from the pharmaceutical company, the local or global, and also we invite the uh, reviewers, agency reviewers, to um, help we understand better about the guideline. Um, here uh, is I'd like to spend time on uh, the one proposed uh, published in 2015. Uh, it's the most recent uh, the gu guidance for uh, Chinese companies to do an international multi-center clinical trial. Uh, this one is issued um, uh, early of uh, 2015, and effective from the March. And these it clearly encouraged the companies to conduct MRCT, or here we call it the International Multicenter Clinical Trial, IMCT, in the areas, especially for the unmet medical needs. Uh, there are most uh, uh, eight different sections. Uh, the, the, the last one is the uh, glossary. And sections in this uh, guideline, and I'm going to spend time on the section three, which is the general requirements. It proposed uh, in this MRCT trial, we we will need at least two countries, including China, and the agency um, hope the the uh, company can pay attention to the ethnic differences. It, uh, expressed by the PKPD uh, profiles. And in addition to those, uh, they suggest assess the global result first and then evaluate the consistency by the subgroup result. Again, about the sample size, it's recommend the sample size should be large enough to evaluate the safety and the efficacy in the Chinese patient. Uh, they also propose the site inspection requirement even for some uh, for some PIs in the uh, other countries the site inspection uh, can also be uh, proposed there and uh, section four it's about the consideration on the trial um, scientific uh, scientificity. The, the top one is about the ethnic factors. As Professor Lee introduced, this is from the uh, ICHE5. The ethnic factors include uh, um, intrinsic and extrinsic. Like the intrinsic is more like the uh, human genes, uh, the human related, and the extra more like the uh, environmental or um, culture. Uh, these ethnic factors in uh, the, the effect of ethnic factors uh, are, I think it's uh, the how to consider them in I, E5 and E17 are different. E5 are focused on the difference of the ethnic differences and the E17 pay much attention to um, when to assess the differences. They, they like to uh, focus, investigate the effect of the ethnic factors on the safety and the efficacy effect. So um, we will talk about the E17 later on, but the ethnic factors are always, always the one we, we cannot ignore. Um, another factor, uh, another consideration is dose selection. Um, Dr. Professor Lee introduced quite a lot. I'm going to skip here. And the choice of the placebo uh, effic efficacy endpoint assessment, sample size calculation analysis, statistical analysis, and the collection of AE. Uh, particularly in these guidelines, uh, the agency uh, suggests that we need to include the Chinese KOL in the international DMC if the Chinese patients are over 20%. Uh, these are 
currently the 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 expectation from the agency, but uh, the real case is uh, sometimes it's hard to uh, conduct, especially for the last item because. Uh, there are lack of the experience, the Chinese KOL as the expertise in the DMC. So it's one of the tasks, uh, the experience that uh, DMC members in China can uh, share the experience to more uh, expertise and so that uh, more and more KOLs in, in, China, in China can be uh, one of the uh, KOL DMC members. Uh, in July 2018, this year actually, uh, the summer this year, China uh, CFDA proposed a new uh, guidance on the acceptance of the foreign clinical data. Well, uh, this one is very uh, unexpected. I remember once the guidelines are published, it's on one of the Friday. So usually uh, we thought Friday always give us a surprise. Uh, sometimes it's the best surprise, sometimes like this one is a good surprise. Um, and uh, in, these, in these guidance, uh, the agency proposed three different levels of the uh, medical needs. Uh, well, maybe more than three, but uh, yeah, three, uh, sorry, different levels of unmet medical needs. And then uh, considering these uh, different levels, the agency may fully accept or partially accept or re uh, reject the submission. And uh, for the medication for the severe disease, rare disease or pediatric disease, uh, the agency may be considered as the condition of approval with, uh, with the foreign clinical data without, well, uh, without Chinese patients' data, and then they require the further collection of the efficacy and safety data from the real world evidence. Um, actually, uh, MSD this year uh, applying these guidelines already submitted uh, two different uh, drugs, medications, um, using the condition of approval. Um, so uh, this is good news for most of the um, foreign, uh, well, the global pharmaceutical companies. But in these guidelines, they well, guideline usually is it's not uh, with very clear uh, criteria what kind of drug can be used, what kind of cannot. So after these guidelines are published, uh, quite a number of the global pharmaceutical companies, they'd like to talk with the reviewer, the CDE, uh, to apply, using this guideline to apply the approval of the drugs using the foreign clinical data. So the agency was, uh, was uh, being, a little bit conservative at that moment, they step one step back and then told us it's not the scientific issue, it might be like the fair issue. So uh, as the uh, pharmaceutical companies, we expect the, the CD or the, uh, the guide, guidance or further guidance can provide a more um, clear guidance on how can we use the foreign clinical data in the, in the real case. Um, uh, based on, I mean, based on this guidance, uh, the CTD format dosia is uh, proposed. And from that moment, which means uh, the, the, the CDE reviewers are more and more uh, open to the uh, global submission dosia. So it will kind of the safe uh, Chinese uh, companies to prepare the submission document. And about the MRCT, the guidance mentioned, if the clinical trial is the MRCT trial, then the protocol need to be submitted to the CDE before the trial start. They need to evaluate uh, like the sample size or uh, the 
Uh, it, well, I, I think sample size right now has some room to discuss, but I think uh, they more focus on the uh, the endpoint uh, assessment, whether this is accepted endpoint in China. So it's uh, required. Okay. Uh, the, in the following, I'm, I'm going to spend some time on the statistical um, perspective uh, on the sample size calculation and consistency assessment in the MRCT. Um, of course, if the clinical trial does not considering the China registration, then no requirement for the sample size. Based on uh, the ICHE 17, the sample size requirement, as I just mentioned, uh, the agency <laughs> proposed a very simple way. 100 pairs of patients, here pairs meaning uh, two pairs, control and the treatment. So if there are more than uh, two arms, then it means 100 per arm. And plus, we need the PKPD, uh, especially PK, PK study, phase one studies in China. It's more like they're doing the homework. Um, if the China subgroup results are not consistent with the global result, then an independent phase three trials with statistical significance is required for the registration. Uh, this is kind of like the history. And the method one P, uh, proposed by the PMDA, method one basically, uh, it's, it's a large paragraph here I highlighted. And basically it's meaning that, well, we ask the uh, re region which uh, are going to register this drug need to preserve at least 50% of the global treatment effect. For example, um, you, we use the uh, survival data as example. Uh, for example, the global, uh, the one drug in global has has a ratio like 0.5. Then in China, they need uh, we to approve the hazard ratio in Chinese patients uh, going to be uh, less than point. The hazard ratio going to be less than 5.75. Uh, However, uh, if the global uh, hazard ratio itself has already been 0.8, like the hazard ratio, which is uh, the minimum clinical meaningful ratio, then even though the Chinese, uh, theoretically, Chinese patient need to show the hazard ratio less than 0.9, it's not meaningful. So um, this is the very general uh, concept. And the real implementation, again, we, we need to talk with CBE. Um, uh, the sample size depends on, uh, we have to ensure the 80% probability of showing consistency. So this is basically the method one. And the PMDA method two, uh, again, a very large paragraph. Um, in short, it means, well, uh, if the global has already shown the positive result, then in different regions, here the, again, the region uh, uh, need to define, uh, need predefined in the protocol. And then uh, the, the treatment effect in the, all regions has to be uh, on the same direction, tendency. For example, the hazard ratio is uh, less than one for every region. This is the requirement. And in China, most of the time, we apply the method one, but not method two. Okay, um, before the uh, consistency uh, introduced that, I, I need to uh, bring in the, the uh, disease categories. Um, Three, usually we uh, separate by three categories. The first one is the unmet medical needs and the real disease. Uh, for example, like the HIV or AIDS or some rare disease. Uh, these are most um, needed uh, therapeutic areas. 
So um, the, the Carrick 2 are the common disease without potential ethnic differences. And uh, category 3 are common diseases with potential ethnic differences. Along with these three different uh, categories of the disease, we have three different levels of consistency. Uh, the first one corresponding to the category 1 of the disease is that the treatment effect show the same trend. And level 2 require the treatment effect are proportional. And level 3 uh, require the treatment effect in the region also demonstrate the clinical significance with statistical rigors. Uh, apparently, we, we can see that from the level 1 to level 3, uh, it's from the qualitative to the quantitative assessment and the statistical rigors are increased. Um, because of the historical reason, enrollments in China are kind of slow. Um, the, one of the reasons is the review time in the agency takes too long, uh, even though this situation improved quite a bit, uh, but still not uh, enough. And uh, another reason is the operation reason. Uh, as we know that the um, hospital in China, there are not many hospitals in China are qualified to doing the MRCT. So there are quite limited result or very competitive result for uh, resource of the uh, hospital for different global companies to doing the clinical trial. Um, because of that, so the enrollment of the Chinese patient is lower than expected, or lo lower than we need uh, in the um, in the MRCT trial. Therefore, um, in uh, in addition to the cl classical MRCT, which is the target ethnic groups, uh, or uh, enrolled during the MRCT. Uh, clinical trial enrollment period, Chinese has the extension of MRCT. So these are most common uh, practice right now in China. So uh, if the target, the target uh, ethnic group sample size in the MRCT is uh, adequate to assess the clinical meaningful treatment effect uh, with statistical rigor, if the answer is yes, then we only focus on the data within the MRCT. If not, then we have to consider the extension of the trial. In general, uh, we apply the level three consistency consideration, and we are requiring 80% chance of uh, preserving the 50% of the global treatment effect showing consistency. And we also assume the same treatment effect uh, between the subgroup analysis and the, uh, the total population analysis. And given the global sample size, we calculate the Chinese sample size. So here's our a few example or the formula uh, when we doing the sample size calculation, uh, the continuous case. The global overall the sample size based on here's the um, very straightforward formula. And we here we assume this the, the design is the two arm with randomization uh, one to one. And the treatment effect delta um, with standard deviation uh, theta. And two sided alpha, two types, type two arrows beta. Um, the predefined statistical significance is uh, a predefined constant C. And if uh, the Chinese patients are joining MRCT, like the cl classical MRCT fully, then it's very simple. We use this kind of the model um, 
to do the as, as the the basic con, uh, modeling to calculate the sample size. However, if we have the extension, then we have to uh, assume how many patients we are enrolled, uh, how many Chinese patients we can enroll in the global cohort, and then how many in the extension cohort. And here's the uh, modeling we applied. Uh, similarly, we have the survival data. Uh, we still assume it's the two arm with randomization, um, the equal randomization ratio, and the treatment effect is the ha uh, hazard ratio. Again, it's the two sided alpha, type one, type, uh, sorry, type two arrow beta. And, uh, because the, the survival data is more depends on, uh, the number of events, um, the sample size are highly relied on the event. So the event number is quite important for us. And the hazard ratio is, uh, we're going to show the statistical significance based on the hazard ratio. Um, the assumption is uh, the log hazard ratio follows the uh, asymptotic normality distribution. Therefore, uh, if the Chinese or participate in the classical uh, MRCT, then here's the model we assumed. Uh, here the delta means the log has a ratio, so it's all related to the log has a ratio. And if the extension studies are considered, then again, we also uh, need to calculate the events collected due, uh, for the Chinese patients within the global cohort and the events for the whole Chinese patients. So um, here's our, the modeling we rely on to calculate the charms of to showing the consistency. Um, so basically, if we want to uh, provide the sample size to the study team, we usually keep the range of the sample size and these the different probabilities. Uh, of the consistency criteria, and then we calculate the probability for the team. And the team, uh, it, it's going to be a, a, a team decision to choose one appropriate sample size. And well, this sample size meaning all Chinese patients, uh, the decision of extension is more uh, it's more from the operation perspective. If these kind of, uh, if these sample size are, uh, can be reached during the global cohort, then we target on, um, uh, no extension. However, if not, then probably the extension are required. I'm going to share some case, um, um, uh, which conducted by the MSD China uh, joining the global phase three studies. The first one is the oncology uh, Kichuda, one of the Kichuda oncology study. It's uh, this is actually in the um, first line small cell lung cancer. So uh, general, it's a randomized double blind uh, placebo control multi regional trials. Uh, the population and uh, it's it's a Population is uh, or age uh, older than 18 years or older. The treatment naive patients with PDL1 positive, the first line non-small cell lung cancer patients, and it's multi-regional. Uh, the primary endpoint is overall survival, and the secondary endpoint is PFS, uh, ORR, and the duration of response DOR. Um, global multi MRCT sample size, uh, it's event driven and total is, uh, two, 12 and, uh, 12, one, 1,240 patients with, uh, with the ratio one to one. Um, there are 98% per, uh, percent power to detect hazard ratio, uh, underlying hazard ratio 0 0.65 on the uh, primary endpoint OS at the significance level, uh, it's one-sided. Again, it's equal to the two-sided five percent, but it's we, we written as the one-sided 2.5, uh, 2.5 percent. 
uh, when 340 deaths are observed in the patients with TPS 50%. Uh, TPS 50% meaning they are uh, strong positive PDL1 positive patients. And if extended to the general PDL1 positive patient, which means the TPS 1%, then these sample size provide like 90% power to detect the underlying hazard ratio 0.73 on the OS. Uh, the same, at, at the same alpha level with 848 deaths. And the China consistency criteria, uh, when we calculate these sample size, it depends on the primary endpoint uh, on the primary population, TPS 50%. Uh, we use hazard ratio 0.65. Uh, so therefore, uh, using the PMDA method one, the 15% retentance of the global uh, efficacy has a ratio of 0.65 in the TPS 50% uh, group is the requirement as the uh, criterion. And the sample size for this subgroup is 140. Uh, the overall Chinese subject, uh, 260, are based on the preference rate uh, depends on one these uh, the the strong positive population. It happens to be uh, 260. It, it, this is the final enrollment Chinese patient in this study. Actually, in the uh, plan phase, we we calculate this number to close to 340 Chinese patient. But um, it turns out the TPS 50 per percent of patients in China are more than expected. So the total sample size of Chinese patients reduced quite, quite a bit. Uh, among these 260, about 100 patients are fully joining the global MRCT. And the 160 patients enrolled in the ex extension cohort. Um, this event, well, um, I, I think I remember it's going to be about uh, 60 events uh, within the TPS 50 population Chinese patient to uh, to uh, provide the 80% chance to observe these point estimate to pr uh, preserve the 50% uh, effect reduction effect. So uh, basically, it's using the uh, 6 point, 0.65. Then the Chinese patient we need to show as uh, 0.825 as the final criteria. But uh, it turns out this study has already finished. And the result is very positive. Uh, actually, with uh, 260 patients, our um, subgroup analysis in Chinese patients are even better than the global. So um, the consistency criteria are automatically met, and there is uh, not much uh, questions uh, during the pre-NDA meetings with uh, the agency. However, because this study are just submitted for the approval, so we're waiting for uh, the, uh, the review result uh, or the uh, queries from the agency. Uh, another case uh, study is on the continuous variable. It's in the immunology, uh, genealogy, uh, immunology and the res uh, resp respiratory uh, indication. The design is the randomized, double-blind, placebo control, uh, with three different arms, high dose, low dose, uh, compared with the placebo. It's still a multi-regional trial. Um, the target population is the adult participant subject with the uh, chronic cough. And the primary endpoint is the 24-hour coughs per hour at week 24. This is actually ongoing studies. Um, there are about 1,300 patients 
enrolled in the global. And we assume the standard deviation is 0.7. And it's three arms, so almost 430 patients per treatment arms in the MRCT. Um, if considering the low dose test drug compared with the placebo, we assume 20% differences. And if we consider the high dose drugs, then we assume it's like uh, we should have the 30% differences. And all these arms, uh, 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 ensure 90% power at the significant level of two-sided 5%. Um, using the PMDA method one, 50% retendance of the global efficacy is required. And the sample size for Chinese patient is 200. It's about 15% in total. However, there are only 6% to 8%, if, uh, which to be like the 80 patients uh, Chinese patients fully joining the global MRCT. Um, this is ongoing study. Uh, we 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 talk we talk to the global statistician and the global team about uh, how can you define how many patients uh, or from different regions in the global MRCT. So the six percent is very conservative number. They yeah. mentioned that. We uh, need to uh, kind of uh, uh, balance the East Asian patients with the Caucasian patients. So this 6% is proposed by the global, and not only for Chinese, but also the Japanese patient, uh, it's 6%. But because of the uh, regulation requirement, it's uh, 100 patients uh, per arm. Then we negotiate with uh, CDE, and we also calculate the power of, sorry, it's not the power, it's the chance, 80% chance uh, to do the 50% retendance re retendance of the global effect. Uh, we, this from the simulation, we calculate it's 200 Chinese subject uh, requirement. And the next case is the uh, SEPTIR. These are more like the uh, mimic MRCT uh, with Chinese patients. Uh, kind of, it's not dominant, but uh, the Chinese patient has more than uh, the usual considered, uh, like the 20% or 15% in the MRCT population. So uh, Zaptir is already approved in China. Uh, its indication is HCV. Uh, genetic type 1, 4, and 6 infection. Uh, design, again, is the phase 3 randomized double blind. Two arms with the immediate treatment and deferred blinded treatment ratio 3 to 1. And it's multi-regional. Uh, primary endpoint is the response rate in the immediate treatment arm uh, achieving SVR12, meaning it's uh, over 12 weeks. Uh, compared with the historical response rate, 73%. Uh, this MRCT, we assume the true response rate at least 85.5% and the sample size of 340 in the media treatment arms. The study has more than 99% power to show the superiority to the reference rate of uh, 73 at one-sided alpha level. Uh, there are a total 453 patients in both arms, and the Chinese patient is 151. It's almost one-third of the total population. Uh, here ends the uh, case study, and uh, I'm going to, the last topic I'm going to introduce is the uh, commentary on the E17 implementation in China. And there are four different topics we already discussed and still under discussion. The first one is the early stage development, uh, followed by the statistical issues and sample size calculation, and then operation consideration. And then uh, most important one is the connection with existing or local regu regulations. Now, uh, like Professor Lee just mentioned, uh, investigation of variety of the PKPD profile um, 
along with the ethnic differences, in fact, are quite important. And therefore, it's recommend early participation of the early、uh, phase MRCT. However, in China, this is still very challenging、uh, because we observe the medical practice in、uh, the clinic farm studies could be quite different. For example, in the foreign con-、uh, uh, U.S. countries or the EU countries. They don't have enough hospital hospitality for patients staying there in the clean clean farm studies.、Uh, that it's different in China. So for like for example in China, the patients can、uh, can be in hospital for the whole month to do the PKPD studies. And the second one is、uh, how can we quantitatively evaluate the ethnic differences. Or how to differentiate the true effect from the false signal, because the sample size are well, not only the sample size, the whole trial itself are very small.、Um, and then how to identify the different、uh, intrinsic and extrinsic factors, like to produce the large effect, and how to integrate the variability from the multiple source to predict overall treatment effect. And here's some recommendation、uh, we'd like to propose. The first one is the trial conducted in a multi-ethnic area, for example, like the、uh, California or、uh, Australia. But、uh, this answer needs the agency,、uh, the so the the needs the confirmation from the agency. Do they accept or not? Or、uh, a more most practical way is、uh, we hybrid the E5 and E17 and still join in the global trial in the date stage. But we the PK data coming from the other East Asian country or Asian countries to do the bridging.、Uh, this is the the. And this one is the statistical issues and the sample size consideration. In the design phase,、uh, we need to、uh, define the consistency under E17.、Uh, are we still using the Japan method one or method two, or、uh, for some?、Uh, if the global positive results has been achieved. Uh, can we only、uh, produce the minimal, the local clinical meaningful treatment effect in the specific subgroup? And how to evaluate the consistency in China is still a question.、Uh, of course, the the consequence is、uh, we evaluate the global result first, and then currently the agency are more open to the East Asian data. And East Asian data already is the subgroup of the total population, and how about the China population? It's going to be the subgroup of the subgroup. So how to evaluate the these China, especially the China data, is a question mark.、Uh, are we following the same、uh, evaluation, like showing consistency train, or the descriptive summary is good enough? And about the sample size calculation,、uh, here's the、uh, proposal or the concept we hope、uh, the agency can change is that based on the E17, the regional concept need to replace the country concept.、Uh, we might have the requirement on, like for example,、uh, East Asian population instead of for each different countries. But I think just as Professor Lee mentioned. These need the harmonize from different agencies from the different country、uh, regions. And during the analysis and submission stage,、uh, the recently it's more and more increasing acceptance of the East Asia data.、Um, the requirement is、uh, the this population consists of 15 to 20 percent of the global population. And the requirement of the China data is still unclear.、Um, 
but the re the agency uh, recommend the pre NDA meeting for almost every uh, submission recently. And based on previous experience uh, we have in MSD China, the conditional approval can be granted with very limited Chinese patients data in the submission dossier if the global result and the East Asian result are outstanding. And um, it, the unmet medical needs are very large and uh, extensions is on the way or the commitment study um, if the extension if, if there is no Chinese patients data and of course the extensions cannot be on the way then we need to negotiate with CDE about the uh, next step the commitment study uh, if they accept our proposed commitment study then very likely the conditional approval can be granted. Uh, operational consideration. Uh, the current status is uh, in China, there are diverse operational landscape. Um, it's related to the clinical practice, like the subject selection, study uh, procedural um, comparators and concomitant, uh, concomitant medication. And China has low number of percentage in the MRCT in phase two and three in the past. So um, their experience are limited. Um, this is the, the real case and we hope this can be uh, improved. And they have less experience on the management time. Well, uh, the, man the, the, the next uh, issue is on the management, the timeline and the enrollment. Uh, recently, the startup time in China has been shortened, especially the CTD review time uh, from two years reduced to six days, 60 days. Uh, however, there are many several uh, reviews like the IRB review or uh, human genetic uh, approval, they're like the in sequence. So in the next step, is it, is it possible, uh, for example, like in the Korean, this different review can be conducted in parallel, which can save quite a number of the review timeline. And the third issue is about the data collection and the monitoring. Uh, we proposed currently the, the central lab in the MRCT is um, proposed, it is recommended. However, uh, in China, some central lab are not qualified or uh, not applied yet. So um, can we have more the China-based central lab? This is also a question. And we recommend, uh, it, it's, it's currently the fixed monitoring the frequency um, in China, and these are also need to be changed to be more flexible. Um, acceptance of the MRCT data, we need to uh, understand the special expect, uh, expectation and the overseas inspection, are, uh, it's, it's, it's not clear yet. Uh, the expe expectation on the um, operational uh, consideration is we encourage the MRCT operational environment in China. Uh, this is not only the expectation from the global pharmaceutical company, it's also the expectation from uh, the CFDA, from the healthcare agency in China. And we hope a uh, high capable the um, GCP site and the investigator, um, investigators in China can leading or designing MRCT and enhance the overall MRCT's con consideration uh, conductions capability in industry uh, institute investigator through trainings or uh, initiatives. Um, like here, as it's, it's about the monitoring, we hope the risk-based approach can be adopted for the inspection and monitoring. The last topic is about the uh, connection with the existing and the local regulations. Um, the regulatory agency proposed the requirement uh, on the completeness and the high quality data 
and they would like to follow the SHM4 uh, guideline uh, to prepare. I mean, for for agent uh, for the uh, pharmaceutical companies to prepare the submission dossier, but still there are a few uh, questions need answering and still under discussion. So uh, when existing guidelines and E17 implementation guidelines conflict, which one we should follow and how to follow? Um, Although the acceptance of the foreign clinical data is proposed, but the um, company needs more clear conditions on how to uh, apply using this uh, using this guideline. And the relationship between the E5 and E17, um, how to evaluate the sufficiency of Chinese patient data over the efficacy and safety. Um, with E5, it's very, uh, it, it's, it's not efficient, it's efficient based on the agency, but it's not efficient from the pharmaceutical company, which is 100 pairs plus PK. But in the E17, it's not that, um, clear guideline about, uh, the, uh, how to evaluate the sufficiency and the sample size. And these are still under discussion and it's a very big topic. And um, the requirement of the local early stage trials and the standards about acceptance of the foreigner, uh, foreigner data is missing. Uh, the next one is the requirement of the co commitment study. Also, it's not clear, but uh, agency recommend we communicate with them before, um, before the pre-NDA meeting. Um, if it's acceptable, then probably um, it can be like uh, in, in recent trials uh, conducted in the MRS, uh, in MRC China, we propose uh, joining another MRCT studies as the commitment study uh, to one trying to uh, submit it and the CD accept it. So there is no clear. Um, guidelines on these one requirements, but uh, there is room to discuss. Uh, CD opened the door to for discussion. And the last one is the uh, regulation support to coordinate reviewers from different department of functions, uh, like the EC uh, clinical trial application department, the human genetic uh, review agencies are missing. So uh, here's I. Uh, quickly uh, present the history and the current practice and future expectations based on the E17 uh, in China. So I'm um, very thank you for your listening and open to questions. <laughs>